it says born to fly. This is I also tried diving, you know, and I hate it. It's the water and, and the, <laughs> the, the, the fact that you cannot breathe by yourself and you need all this equipment. It's not my world. I'm, I'm a bird, not a fish. I always had that desire, that feeling to see the world from above. I mean, pretty much 40, 50 percent of all my childhood pictures have been on a tree. Like, like when I'm here, I, I always choose the highest hotel rooms and when I can stand somewhere on top, I, I want to go there. Like, I want to see the world from above. It's just that bird view. And still, it is, you know. And that's probably the reason why I became a skydiver, because this was the closest and, and cheapest way to feel like a bird a little bit, you know, because I couldn't buy myself an airplane. And of course, you cannot fly, but when you step out of an airplane, it pretty much feels like you fly around. And later on, they came up with wingsuits, you know, so now you're not only falling down, you can also cover distance, and it feels like you're real flying, and then I developed this wing. So I was always, I think, constantly trying to figure out a way how to fly like a bird. You know, when it started spinning so fast, of course there's a moment when you start to realize, I really hope I can handle this, you know, because you spin so fast, you have a lot of g-force on your body, you have a lot of your blood rushing to your brain. But I was constantly trying to figure out a way how to stop that spin. And this is the first time that I'm falling at supersonic speeds, so you can never practice this before because you either go for it or not, you don't, you know. Now you have one minute while you're spinning to figure out a solution. I was constantly moving my arms and legs to different positions to figure out is it getting better or worse. And at one moment, I had the perfect position where it stopped, immediate. From that moment on, I had it, yeah, and then I lost it again. I was stable as a rock afterwards, and I was able to stop myself from spinning. I never had a single thought that I'm gonna die because we've been practicing this so many times, you know, we had a lot of safety equipment developed. So my concern was more driven by not performing well, because I wanted to break the speed of sound so, so bad, you know, that when you perform in front of the whole world, I mean, 2.1 billion people have been watching this, and you do not want to perform well in front of so many people. I don't think there's a lot of people out there who understand that kind of feeling. It's probably the Pope, the President of the United States, who have to perform on such a high level in front of so many people. But NASA was always interested in, in our data. Yeah. What we proved on that day is um, we were testing the next generation pressure suit. Yeah. We proved out that that pressure suit has the capability to fall at supersonic speed and, and hold up. You know, and this is a, this, these types of pressure suit are going to be used for future space explorations. So that's, that's, that's a test which proves out that the equipment is, is working right. We also developed a lot of safety equipment. And that data goes to every organization in the world who needs that data because what we wanna, wanna make is future space explorations much safer, you know? And we know that brands and a lot of other people are working on, on, on space tourism. It's becoming more unpopular. And those people, they have to have safety equipment in order to come back alive if something goes wrong. And we know from history in aviation and space that there's always a fatality somewhere. Well, you know, we never talk about money because passion, adventure and passion has no price tag.